Thank you, Gorsens, for the introduction. Uh, I'm Kartika Subramani, a postdoctoral researcher in Georgia Institute of Technology. Uh, very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, this is one of the fun projects I've worked with, so I'm definitely glad to be to have the chance to present this. And uh, our work on discovering and measuring CDNs prone to domain fronting. So this is a collaborative work between my colleagues from Georgia Institute of Technology and University of Georgia. Now let's dive into what is domain fronting. So it's a well-known technique uh, since 2010, that's been around since 2010, and that widely attained popularity around 2015. Okay, so it's basically essentially works by masking the true uh, destination or endpoint of the that a client wants to connect to. So uh, it uh, it is possible by leveraging an integral functionality of shared services such as CDNs, which is uh, which allows them to share the infrastructure between multiple domains uh, or customers. Now, technically, it works by using different domain names in different layers of HTTPS connection. So imagine a network firewall that does not have access to or visibility into your encrypted traffic. In that case, what they use is or rely on is DNS-based block lists, uh, which basically uh, scans through all these SNS domains uh, that request for DNS records and blocks them if it is cross references a block list and blocks them if at all it is found to be malicious. Uh, to avoid this, this technique basically it does is uh, use a different legitimate domain when making the TLS connection request, which is the SNI field. And once the TLS connection is established, uh, they use the HTTP host, uh, host field of the HTTP header in order to uh, mention the target domain. And this is the domain that the CDN will actually look in and then reroute the traffic to. So is domain fronting actually harmful? You know, that is the kind of controversial topic and is highly subjective uh, in case of bypassing censorship. However, what is clearly malicious is malicious actors using it for uh, hiding their C2 traffic, uh, command and control traffic, and bypassing that Walls. So um, essentially what an attacker could do is just subscribe to a CDN that is known to host some popular domains. And they will end up using these popular domains as the friend domains to bypass the firewall. Here is a timeline of notable events related to domain fronting, starting with the paper published by uh, Fifield et al. in 2015, where they introduced the Tor Meek plugin. And, uh, after that, we could use the, sorry, yeah. Then we can see evidence of it being used by messaging platforms such as Signal, Telegram, uh, for circumventing censorship, right? Following which, there was a huge uh, news and it was a big issue. Uh, so major providers took some initiative to block domain fronting on their side, especially Google and uh, Amazon in 2018. However, you can still find some evidence of it being used by malicious actors uh, to hide their C2 traffic up until 2022 because not all CDNs had blocked domain fronting. So they could just you know, switch the providers. So that is when our research came in. In 2023, we concluded our research and disclosed the findings. Uh, I believe Fastly was the recent one to block domain fronting in Feb 2024. Uh, yeah, so now that we know the what, uh, let's move on to why. Why do we need to discover uh, domain fronting? Simply put, it is just to know that whether it could be still abused in the wild. Okay, to figure out the answer for that, we basically pose these three research questions. Are the, uh, do these popular CDNs that block domain fronting, do they do it throughout their infrastructure or is there some kind of a loophole there? And if that is the case, are there any other less popular CDNs that anyone could use to perform this domain fronting? And if so, in, in order for the domain fronting to be uh, considered a threat, they should involve some kind of a legitimate popular domains, which basically prevents the network providers from uh, you know, blocking the whole CDN services, which has been done in the past. So our third final question is, do these less popular CDNs host any content from popular websites or domains? To address this, we basically propose a framework, uh, which is these advantages compared to the existing work, which is basically cost effective in certain terms, because it avoids the registration costs that people used to manually 
uh, in order to test domain fronting, they will register to each and every CDN to do that, and it is expensive. And it is semi-automated with minimal uh, manual efforts that is required for just finding the mapping between CDN and the domains. And finally, it's scalable to any new CDNs that you could encounter. The yeah, so we have done this in three phases. The phase one is the CDN domain discovery. The goal of this is basically to identify a list of domains that each CDN uh, that host contents for a given CDN, which could later be used for testing. So let's take a, take a look at a simplified example. So uh, consider this domain testcdn.com that is owned by a CDN, which is what it uses to reroute traffic to its customer domains. Okay, and one of its customers is adds its .example.com. So in these cases, a DNS CNAME record may be created, which basically mentions that the alias of assets.example.com is uh, testcdn.com. And then based on that, the traffic will be rerouted. So since we have access in our lab to the organization's passive DNS data, we uh, pass through these DNS records filter out the CNAME records, and based on the CDN domain keywords, we just identify the mapping between different domains and different CDNs. Once we have that, we get the fully qualified domain names and extract the SLD part of it. This SLD part is required for the next phase in our research, which is domain URL discovery. The goal here is to basically identify resources that can be downloaded uh, and can be compared and verified for the testing component, okay? This is just, yeah, you will understand it later. So um, we basically use a simple crawler that visits each of the SLD that we identified, and it records all the URLs of the resources, downloadable contents like images, uh, JavaScript resources, and um, it logs those resources. Finally, we have a list of resource URLs for every CDN and domains that is part of it. We gather all this information, finally give it to our fronting tester component. In case of this fronting tester, for each CDN that we have, we want to make sure that our test test results are accurate. So we generate multiple cases of multiple test cases with different pairs of domains that is going to be used and different sets of URLs that would be used. And for each of the test cases, we perform three different requests. One is a very direct request where the target URL with the target domain has been made and download the content, store the response. The second is basically the domain fronting request where we modify the SNI name to the front domain. In this case, it's just a different domain from the list and we download the content as well. Finally, we make a third request, which is basically a validation approach where we uh, verify if that particular target URL is also part of the fronting domain, which would cause some false positives in our cases. So we just make that third request for that. And to, again, ensure accuracy, there are, to avoid reduce the false positives, we validate these test tuples and make sure that the domains are not related to each other. Basically, they're not owned by the same organization. And also use for the test cases to filter out the successful test cases, we apply these conditions. The responses from the target resource and the fronting request should be same. On the other hand, the fronting request and the fronting domain from the third request should be different. And of course, it should be a valid response. So that ends the how. Now moving on to what did we find out, where did it lead us, uh, the results. On a higher level, we discovered 38 CDNs uh, by parsing the DNS record. And uh, CDNs with malicious domains, sorry, uh, then in the second phase, we basically filtered out 30 CDNs, which contain some part of crawlable domains. And on the other hand, after testing and validation, we found 22 CDNs that were prone to domain fronting. On further analysis, uh, to answer our initial three research questions, are there popular CDNs that do not block it throughout their entire infrastructure? We basically found Akamai and Fastly, uh, where there were some discrepancies. We were able to get in touch with Fastly. So they mentioned that they only used to um, block domain fronting with the new customers or some kind of renewal needs to happen. Uh, we didn't get any response from Akamai, so no information on that. Next, we have uh, 
Are there any other lesser popular CDNs that do not block domain fronting? We found over 20 CDNs that allow domain fronting, which basically serves as a pool for the attackers to use. And in among these 20 popular CDNs, there were many CDNs that hosted the content from popular domains, which is basically less than 10K ranking from tranquilists, which again um, increases the impact of the domain fronting attack. In conclusion, we built an effective system to test domain fronting in CDNs, uh, which is, can be used for different parties for different purposes. We disclosed the findings to all the 22 CDNs uh, domain fronting. Finally, we conclude that domain fronting is still at large and can be abused by the malicious actors. Um, however, the mitigation cost for each CDN or for the network administrators, it comes at a high cost, which is why we don't see it being done at all these CDNs. So in future, we hope to develop or hopefully there is some research which comes up with a cost-effective defense on many fronts and not just CDNs for domain fronting. Uh, thank you, and if you have any questions,